This is the sound of dent eliminators at work, slowly removing dents from vehicles at Toyota Des Moines by using a process called paintless dent removal. The key thing about the, this process, it's a little bit different than normal body work where this, is, this isn't a repair, it's a restoration. When their work here is done, they will have eliminated dents from some 500 vehicles. These cars are perfect type of damage for this process. Regardless of the severity of damage, the key is this specially made light. It just highlights the, the finish. The light helps BART-Q and the other repair techs find what they're looking for. It helps us see the dents clearly. It highlights the imperfections in the paint. At that point, work continues with Brace tools allowing them to get like right to the story. dent to work it out. Just pushing the, gen out, the dent out gently, push on it over and over again in the low part of the dent until the dent's gone. BartQ says once he and the other repair techs are finished, vehicles are returned to their pristine, pre-damage perfection. Once the repair is done, the dent repair is perfect, car's back to the way it was before the hailstorm. BartQ has been eliminating dents in vehicles since 1994 and says the best part of all is the process keeps the original finish. As for average cost for repairs, we're told there's no average because the price of repair depends on the severity and how much damage there is to a vehicle. Stacy. An Iowa woman has been convicted of killing her romantic rival who was last seen in Omaha more than four years ago. Shannon Goyer of Persia was found guilty today of first degree murder in the death of Carrie Farver. Police say Goyer posed as Farver online and on the phone for years after Farver's disappearance. An officer testified that Farver had been dating Goyer's ex-boyfriend for weeks when she disappeared. In Perry, a former chiropractor has been sentenced in a child sex abuse case. Daniel Duffy pleaded guilty to third degree sexual abuse in April. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Back in 2010, he was charged with having inappropriate contact with a female patient. He was found guilty of assault and spent 30 days in jail. Making news right now, police arrested another person today in connection with Monday's deadly concert bombing in Manchester, England. Shannon Humphreys has been following the new developments, and Shannon, the latest suspect is a woman. Yeah, Steve, that's right. She is the sixth person arrested in England today in connection to the bombing. Police say the woman was detained during a series of property searches in the Blackley area of the city. Earlier today, police arrested another suspect carrying a suspicious package. One of the others arrested in England is the older brother of the alleged bomber, Salman Abedi. Abedi's father and younger brother have also been detained in Libya. The Libyan anti-terror force that arrested Abedi's brother says he had links to the Islamic State and was aware of his brother's plans. Manchester police said in a statement, this is a fast moving investigation and we are keeping an open mind at this stage. I think it's very clear that this is a network that we are investigating. British soldiers are guarding key locations across the country, including Buckingham Palace. Still to come this evening, punished for being pregnant. The backlash one high school senior is getting from her Christian high school. Plus, how would you like to enjoy your coffee in the company of rats? We take you to California where people are paying good money to do just that. I'm Sally Kidd on Capitol Hill where Trump cabinet officials are pitching the president's budget to Congress. Taking a look at the roads now, things are looking pretty good. We are accident free and the slowdowns are in the typical places for this time of day. We are going to head outside and take a live look through the DOT cam at 3580 and Hickman. Things are getting a little crowded, but everyone is still just moving right along. So we'll keep a close eye on this and let you know if it changes coming up after the break. This is Iowa's news leader. This is KCCI 8 News at 5 with Steve Carlin, Stacy Horst, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Gertz, and Right Now coverage with Shana Humphreys. Right now, the Congressional Budget Office says the GOP health care bill pushed through the House this month would leave an additional 23 million people uninsured by 2026 compared to President Obama's 2010 overhaul. The report says that's partly because insurance on average would cover less of people's health care costs. Senate Republicans have been holding closed door meetings to write their own health care bill. Right now, top Trump administration officials are headed to Capitol Hill to defend the president's 2018 budget proposal. It is drawing strong opposition from Democrats and even some Republicans are skeptical. Sally Kidd is live on Capitol Hill. So what's the latest on this, Sally? Well, Stephen Stacey, the president wants Congress to pass a plan that's 
balance. He wants a balanced budget and he says this plan accomplishes that. But some say it's based on growth projections that are just not realistic. Pitching the president's $4 trillion spending plan. The new foundation for American greatness. Defending deep cuts. I understand those figures may sound alarming for some. And touting a pro-growth agenda. Tax reform will play a major role in our campaign for growth. Top administration officials call it a taxpayer's first plan that will balance the budget in 10 years. The foundation for the plan is 3% growth. In fact, that is Trumponomics. I describe it as the taxpayer's shaft budget. The president's plan ramps up spending for the military and veterans and includes billions for paid parental leave and the president's border wall. What I call the wall to nowhere. Over a decade, the budget slashes billions for Medicaid and food stamps and other domestic programs. A uh, cruel and morally bankrupt budget. It includes major reductions in education spending, eliminating money for after school and teacher training programs. The president's budget fulfills his promise to devolve power from the federal government and place it in the hands of parents and families. While some Republicans are on board. I honestly wish that we could vote out the president's budget today and make it the law. Deficit.